that is all for games. Which brings us to Silent Hill the movie. Yes, you had been expecting it. Now, yes, I love the games, but I still am going to try to be very objective in my review of the film. Yes, there are a ton of things from the games in the movie. Several of the camera angles and creatures, a bunch of the music, the visuals are very directly inspired by the games, and credit where credit is due, the film looks amazing. No doubt about it. The cinematography, the effects, I mean there are a few places where the CGI is a little bit obvious, but apart from that, it looks fantastic. No doubt about it. I don't think it quite manages the atmosphere, though it's not for a lack of trying. I think part of it is the complete useless addition of Sean Bean's character. You could literally cut him out of the movie and it would only improve on things. Don't get me wrong, it's a well-written character and he plays it perfectly, but there is no need for him in the film. Now as far as I know, the story behind that is I don't know if it was director Christoph Gans or someone else, but someone making the movie wanted the lead to be a woman. This really wasn't necessary because there already is a strong female character in the first game, Officer Sybil Bennett, and she's still in the movie. And the result of it was that the studio said, you need to put more men in the film, and so Sean Bean was added with literally no impact on the story. So every scene of his is really just interrupting the normal flow of the film wherein the atmosphere is, well, trying to be developed anyway. I also wouldn't necessarily call the film terribly scary. It can be disturbing at points. Nowhere near as much as the games, but still, there are some nice references to stuff in the games. Another thing on Sybil Bennett, in this movie, is it just me, or does she look like she just stepped out of a sexual fantasy of someone who has a preference for leather? I know she wasn't unattractive in the games, and yes, there was some creaking of the leather, at least in the CGI cutscenes, but still, is it really necessary to sexualize any female in a horror movie nowadays? Even the mother is. The plot itself is not horrible. It's nowhere near as memorable or chilling as that of any of the games. And it is flawed, but it's not the worst I've ever heard. I also just have to wonder why they would bother using so many of those elements when they had a completely different story to tell. That's not a spoiler. I'm not going to give you any details in this video about the story. Suffice it to say, it's not the story of the game. I would actually say that they shot themselves in the foot by copying so many of the elements so directly when they weren't going to use them for the exact same thing. They wrote themselves into a corner and suddenly they had to figure out justifications for all the different things and they didn't completely succeed. And then there are the shortcomings that come from it being a Hollywood flick. Everything is explained at the end. It needs a defined bad guy character and it steers away from any backstory that adds ambiance and atmosphere and settles for all of the story having directly to do with the main plot, the main conflict. All in all, not a good adaptation, and not that good of a movie either. I mean, most fans are going to be disappointed, in spite of the occasional utterly gratuitous fan service, but people who just want a good horror movie are probably not going to be completely wowed by it either. Anyway, those were my spoiler-free reviews of the Sound Hill franchise. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time.